Welcome back to the channel. Uh, today we're going to be talking about navigation split view in Swift UI. We'll go over a, a basic example of how we want to implement this, uh, making a small version of the Messages app. All right, let's jump right in and get started. So we will open up YouTube and create a new project. We'll choose iOS and app, and we will call this navigation split view example and we'll just save it wherever we want all right so navigation split view is Apple's way of letting the uh, letting you as the developer be able to uh, have your app run on any size screen uh, anything down from like Apple Watch all the way up to Apple TV and the largest TV that you could think of. So um, this is probably the way that most people actually should be adding navigation to their apps nowadays. Uh, it will help it be more compatible with any format size and it even works great on the phone as you'll see here in just a second. So let's go ahead and let's just add our navigation split view and right now we're only going to do a sidebar and a detail but this same stuff that we're going to be doing in the video today can also uh, be used for the three column layouts all right so as we can see the sidebar and the detail both take a view and so we'll just hit enter to jump right into there and with any view we want And with that small amount of code, we were able to get a navigation split view up and running. All right, so now that we've got that all set up and ready to go, before we get too carried away with making it actually work, let's go ahead and uh, create a location for shareable data so that we can share this data across both our sidebar and our detail view. So let's create a view model. And we've got two properties that we want to add to it. A selected message, which will be, let's go ahead and create that type here. And this message has an ID of type UUID. It has a name of type string and it has a message of type string all right and our selected message will be an optional message and then we want to go ahead and pre-populate this list with a little bit of data just to make our example a little bit nicer if you don't want to do this you don't have to do this uh, but again like I said it'll just make our example a little bit nicer so we will say all messages is an array of messages and we'll say that I sent this first message and we'll create a fictional character called Alex and he is a little kid so he loves poop jokes and we'll create another fictional character here his name is Jake and he says privacy is the best policy perfect all right now that we've got our view model set up let's actually allow our views to listen by letting this conform to add observable great all right now we're actually ready to start using some of this data uh, with real views so let's go ahead and start with our sidebar view and let's get a list of the individual messages showing up on that sidebar view 
So we'll come back over to our project navigator and it's, uh, press Command plus N for a new view and we'll choose Swift UI view. And we will call this sidebar content view. On our sidebar content view, we want to take a binding to the view model that we had in the in the other file, in our main file. And the reason we want to take a binding to that is it's better to only have one source of truth for the data in your app. And so we want that source of truth to be our view model that we created in the content view. And we do that by saying we want a bindable variable of view model that is of type view model. Just like that. All right, and now a preview is going to complain saying that we didn't pass that. So let's go ahead and instantiate our view model there. Great. Okay, so now we will list over the data in that view model. And so we'll say view model dot all messages because that's what we want to show. And we want to say, we want to see each item in the list. Now, this is complaining right now that all messages um, doesn't uh, conform to identifiable. And so let's go back and let's fix that. So our message needs to conform to identifiable. And I can go ahead and let you know that it'll also complain later if it doesn't conform to hashable too. So let's just go ahead and fix that now while we're here. Great, now our side view, con view content should be happy about that. There we go. All right, so we are going to do a button, and inside our button, we're going to say view model dot selected message equals whatever item that we happen to click on. And the label for that button, we want to do a VStack with a text that holds the item dot name and a text of the item dot message. Ah, so that doesn't quite look like iMessage, so let's clean this up a little bit. Let's align uh, this with the leading edge. There we go. And our text is blue, so let's change that. That's just because of the default button style in uh, SwiftUI is that blue button text. So if we change this to plain, it goes back to just regular looking text. So now let's make this a uh, bold font. There we go. And let's make this foreground style of secondary. There we go. All right, now that's still readable. It looks pretty good and it looks similar to the messages. It's not perfect, uh, but it's a good start and great for our example. All right. So our sidebar uh, view is pretty much ready to go with this right here. So let's go back in and let's replace this sidebar text with our sidebar content view. And we will pass, ah, we didn't create our view model in this side, inside of this view yet. So let's do that. At state var view model is a view model. And now we will use that code here. There we go. And in just a second, as you can see, we've got our list here from our sidebar content. And when we click on any of these, it should go to the detail view. Now, if we click on any of these, it won't go to the detail view just yet. And that's because we haven't actually used any of our selected content or selected messages uh, anywhere else. And so let's go ahead and fix that next. Let's create a detail view, going back to our project navigator, command N for a new view, new Swift UI view, and let's call this detail content view. All right, so inside of here, we want to take uh, the selected message, and so this will be our selected message, and it is of uh, a message type. Great. And then actually we'll make this a constant because we actually don't need to change it for our example. And that says we're missing an argument, so let's fix that. And we will create a message here. 
that is a preview name and a oops preview message great and then let's go ahead and display that so we will say text of selected message dot message and this would be just a mock of the messages list in SwiftUI from iMessage. So let's go back to our content view and let's implement that detail view here. Whoops. And our selected message is going to be our view model dot selected message. However, that's going to throw an error because we've told the detail content view that it is guaranteed to have a message whenever it's shown and this selected message as we can see right here is optional and so we need to safely handle that so let's do that by uh, adding an if statement so we'll say if let uh, selected message equals our view model dot selected message then we'll show our detail content view with that selected message. Now this does a couple things. It makes sure that uh, we still we know we have a message. However, if we were actually fetching these messages from a server, for example, there are times where this list could be empty. And so let's go ahead and check for that too. So if this view model, yep, yeah, that's exactly that's exactly what we're looking for. If this view model, uh, if all the messages are, are not empty, then we know that we have at least one message in there. And so, because this is saying if, if, the all, if all messages are empty, and this exclamation point here says not. So if all messages are not empty, then we know we have at least one. And we can go ahead and say detail content view. And we'll just by def we'll, by default we'll choose our first message as the selected message temporarily until a user has actually picked a message. And so we will come in here and we will say that this is our view model dot all messages dot first. Now this first is also optional and we know that the view model is not empty and has to have at least one. So we'll go ahead and force unwrap that safely because again we've already checked this up here. Now if everything else has gone wrong and we don't have a selected message and all our messages is empty, uh, all our messages are empty, then we can show the user a, um, a different view called content unavailable and we will pass in a couple uh, things here we'll say select a conversation and we will use a system image of Ah, exclamation, um, exclamation mark, do we have a bubble? There we go, that's perfect. Exclamation mark dot bubble. All right, so the way these will work is if there is a selected message, we'll display it. If there's not, we'll choose to display the first one by default. And if for some reason we're fetching this from the server and we haven't gotten any content back yet, uh, we will to, we will display a view that says to the user, select a conversation. All right, let's give this a shot and see if it works. Ah, it looks like we missed something along the way. Let's go back and check our sidebar content view since that's what we're looking at here. Ah, okay. So we are displaying our list, but we're not doing anything once the item has been selected. So let's go back and let's add a selection, which is a binding to our selected message from our view model. 
uh, that that should get it. So let's go back to our content view and try this out one more time once it refreshes. There we go. Perfect. All right. Now that's what it looks like on the iPhone. Let's go somewhere else and let's say what does it look like on a M4 iPad Pro. Let's check that out and see what it looks like. There we go. And so we've got our sidebar up here where we can choose from our messages. And now if we choose this one, there we go. Great. And to get the full benefit of this, you really need a larger device. So like an iPad and landscape will let you see everything all at once, um, even more so than the iPad in portrait mode. So this is pretty good. Uh, let's try to relaunch this one more time and we will see uh, what that actually looks like. All right, this is awesome. So back in our content view, uh, we said if all messages is not empty, which it is not empty, we've pre-populated it, pre-populated it with some data, then we want to choose our first message and display that one by default. And that's exactly what we get when we uh, launch the simulator with a brand new app. Now let's actually take just a second and see what it would look like if this message list was in fact empty. And we will relaunch it. Ah, we didn't tell it what type it is, so it is an array of message. There we go. Okay, try that one more time. Now we should be seeing exactly our content unavailable view here. Ah, didn't think about that one. Since we took the all messages away, we didn't come up with a solution for our sidebar content. Let's go fix that now. So if our view model to all messages is empty. And if it's not empty, then we want to show the list. There we go. So content, unavailable view. And we will take, uh, we want the system image, that one, there we go. Downloading data. Let's see what kind of images we've got for that. Possibly a cloud. Cloud.circle, that works. All right, let's try this again. Now, there we go. We're letting the user know that theoretically we would be downloading the data. We're not actually in this example since this is strictly for the navigation split view. But it lets the users know what could be going on in the background. Perfect. All right, and we said that that also worked on an iPhone, so let's run it on an iPhone and see what it looks like. Great, we've got our downloading data to let the user know, hey, here's what's going on in the background. And we'll go back to our view model and add this data back in. And rerun the app. There we go. And now we've got our conversation list here. And if we click on one of them, it shows the messages. And with that, if you found this valuable, please feel free to like and subscribe to the channel and share it with all your friends and uh, get their opinions on it too. And if you want to, leave a comment. Just be nice about it. That's all I ask. Thanks. Have a great day.